<laughs> oh, sorry about that, guys. It's kind of crazy out there today. Hey, everybody. Sorry for the hectic intro. It has snowed just over 13 inches last night, and it's still currently snowing, so uh, my drive to work was an adventure, to say the least. But anyways, since we're going to be cooped up for the next couple of days, we may as well get some wrenching done. And I think you guys may already know what we're going to be wrenching on. Our 22 BRZ. Today we'll be dropping the oil pan and cleaning out the oil pickup. I'm sure a lot of you remember a few weeks ago we did that on our 22 WX. And that job turned into an absolute nightmare fairly quickly because the studs Subaru uses in the turbo are again absolute pieces of god I absolutely hate them. But since the BRZ doesn't have any turbo in sight, I'm actually pretty eager to tackle this on. Now I'm sure some of you are probably scratching your heads wondering how come you did the pickup on the WX before you did it on the BRZ since the issue's been known on BRZs for like, I don't know, a year longer. And the sad reason behind that is we weren't sure if we we're gonna be keeping our little BRZ. I really wanted to keep it because it is just such a fun car to drive. But unfortunately, I don't get that much saying things like that. But recently I've been hearing more and more good news that we are in fact gonna be keeping it, which means we are gonna be building it into what? I'm not so sure yet, but I'll figure that out pretty soon. So before we start voiding our warranties like absolute maniacs, we gotta make sure it's safe to do so because leaving that RTV in the oil pickup unattended can really cause you a headache and blow a giant hole in your wallet. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing you gotta do is get rid of your metal skid pan. There's gonna be eight 12 mil bolts, two 10 mils, and then a few pop clips. And of course the pop clips have a bunch of dirt in them. Come on, don't make me break you. There we go. Voila. With our skid pan out of the way, I'm gonna briefly hit these two nuts with some PB blaster and let it soak because they look a little bit similar to the studs that Subaru uses in the turbos, um, minus the inverse Torx head. So hopefully these don't turn my life into a living nightmare like the WX turbo studs did. Now, while that's soaking, we're gonna drop the car and unplug the O2 sensors from the top so we don't have to mess with them down here. Ah, you guys see my problem here? I'm sorry, WX, you're gonna have to go outside. Get me back inside. Oh. All right, we are at the passenger side of the engine bay and we got to unclip this black connector and then unclip the wire from two places on the block and then unclip this gray connector. All right, now the two clips holding the O2 sensor in are ones down here and ones between the two cam covers down here. Now they're pressed in there flush, really annoying. So I'm gonna first use a pick to just get myself a little bit of room to hopefully sneak a flathead or some sort of pry tool in there. Come on. There we go. I didn't make a mess, that's kind of rare. While our oil is draining, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the cap back so we can get the headers off of the car a lot easier. Next, we gotta undo this mid-pipe bracket. Oh, God. All right, looks like it's choosing violence, so violence, we shall give it. Yeah. Now we're going to just loosen the mid-pipe bracket via these two 12 mil bolts up here. You don't have to get them off, just loosen them to give the bracket some wiggle room. And there we go, she's off the bracket. With the mid-pipe loosened up, it's time to attack these nuts. Woo! 
Let's hope the second one goes relatively without worries, just like the first one did. Ah, beauty. Whew. All right, thankfully those two nuts came off relatively without a fight. A little bit of PB blaster always goes a long way. So now we're just gonna wiggle the mid pipe off and then start unbolting our headers. All right. Just like that. We're just gonna let it hang for right now. Let's get these headers off. Oops, looks like I almost missed a third O2 sensor wire clip. There we go. Okay, now we can unbolt the headers. Unbolting the headers is gonna be pretty straightforward. You have three nuts on each side, one right here, one right here, and then one right in between the two pipes. Um, and same exact thing on the other side. There's number three. And what we're actually gonna do is put it back on one of the outside studs on just a couple threads. So when we unbolt the other side, it still has at least something to hang on to. You wanna probably give it some upward pressure when you're undoing one of the last nuts so it doesn't destroy the threads on the stud. And here we go. Ah, there we go, victory. To get the oil pan off, we have 11 of these 10 millimeter bolts going all the way around. Get these off and then we'll be good to start prying. All right, so ideally for this part, you'd wanna pick up an oil pan pry tool, kinda like this. But unfortunately here at RSD, we don't have one, so we're gonna do it the old fashioned way. A rubber mallet and a lot of it. After about five minutes of doing it the caveman way, we got absolutely nowhere. So after a bit some digging around, I found this real interesting snap-on hook pry tool that I'll be using. What I like about this is that the edge is not sharp, it is rounded because the upper mating surface is aluminum, so if you start like going at it with a flathead, you might mess up your mating surface and then you'll be in a world of pain. Oh, there we go. That's what we were looking for. And there we go. Once you're at this point, you can kind of just sort of twist it around till it comes off. Be mindful of the oil pickup because it's plastic. And if it breaks off, you're gonna have to rip your motor out, undo the timing covers to replace it. Look at that, it's like a guitar string. All right, moment of truth, BRZ edition. Yup. Oh yeah, baby. None like some good old RTV in the pickup, I'll tell you what. Ah, all right, time to grab our 90 degree pick and go to town. Quick rundown on how to do this. First, you will need a 90 degree pick. I found this to work the best. Second, what you need to know is that the BRZ, GR86, and WX oil pickups are a basket type. So basically they are a box like this with holes on every side. I noticed, however, all the RTV seems to always get stuck on this back screen. So what you're gonna do is take your 90 degree pick, push it up against the back wall, and just kind of scrape it all loose and then scrape it all the way down the pickup tube. I'm going to go do that now and I'll collect all the RTV that I get out and I'll show you guys. After about an hour, this is what we were able to fish out. Uh, pretty consistent with what we found in our 22WX. Um, one big piece, a whole lot of other smaller medium ones. We also found a little bit of black RTV, which is from the case halves, I was told. But anyways, after an hour, our oil pickup looks a whole lot more cleaner. There were just a couple little tiny pieces that I, I wasn't able to get, but you know what? I'm not really worried about those. I was mostly concerned with this big booger here. Now let's take a look at our oil pan bolts. As you can see, every single one covered in RTV. Some of them have a nice big glob on top of them, so those will have to be cleaned with a wire wheel brush before we reinstall them. 
Before we get to cleaning everything off, let's quickly talk about a few misconceptions. Now, I see a lot of people thinking that most of the RTV in the pickup actually comes from the oil pan, but I mean, this is my second oil pan and both of the oil pans that I pulled seem to have this bead that was on the inside fully intact. This obviously ripped from me ripping the oil pan off, but besides that, yep, yeah, it seems completely intact. Let me show you guys where the RTV is actually coming from. And here it is. Here is what I suspect to be the main culprit, the timing covers. I mean, look at this. That's absolutely horrendous. How much extra that is on the outside. And I imagine it's probably a pretty similar view inside as well. And it goes and it goes and it goes all the way around the timing cover, guys. There's no end to it. Then look at the cam cap here, just also same thing. Just absolutely enormous amount of RTV poking out. Um, the valve cover actually uses a rubber gasket, which is good. And for one of our final culprits, the upper oil pan seal. You can see, have a nice big glob up there. For those of you that don't know, the FA24 has two oil pans, the lower one, which we removed, and then the upper one starts here and goes up here. So yeah, now that you know the culprits, it's time to get to some cleaning. All right, so when it comes to cleaning your oil pan mating surface, the best method I found is to trim all the excess big chunks off with a razor blade and then clean the rest up with a plastic wire wheel brush. Don't mind these guys, he's seen better days before uh, the 22WX oil pan. All right, now we're at the point where I am going to stop using a razor blade. The goal with the razor blade is not to get down to the mating surface, it's just to really get all the excess off and we can easily get the rest off with the plastic wire wheel. All right, as you guys can see, we are done cleaning our oil pan. We do have a few like little teeny tiny bits and pieces of RTV here and there. I'll probably just finish getting those off with my fingernail. But overall, as you can see, yes, the plastic wheel brush does kind of scratch the paint, but rarely does it ever, if ever, scratch through it. This was probably for me prying a little bit too ambitiously, but this is where the strengths of RTV will really shine in the fact that it is super forgiving. So even on a scratch like this, RTV will have no problem filling up in there and sealing it all nice. I'd even go as far to say that I did a worse job on our 22 WX oil pan as I started with a metal wild wheel brush on it. Um, and we're about six, 700 miles in and no sign of leaks. So not really worried. Now all that's left to do is going to be cleaning this out with brake clean, but that is gonna wait until we're done cleaning our upper mating surface. So let's go do that. All right, here's our mating surface. Already started a little bit in some places, but basically mainly what you're gonna wanna focus on is the actual mating surface. I'll make sure to highlight it. Um, and also more or less, you want to get the inside step here clean. Although the inside step isn't part of the mating surface, it probably would still be a good idea to get most of this RTV that's gonna be living inside your engine out anyways, since you've come this far already. Um, stuff that I won't really worry about is all this RTV group outside. I'm just gonna somewhat scrape it just so it doesn't put any downward pressure on our oil pan once we put it on. Now this is where we will not be using a wire wheel brush of any sort, plastic or metal. This is where a carbide scraper or just a simple razor blade will come in handy. When you're using a razor blade, just make sure you keep it in a straight on angle such as this. That will give you the lowest chance of actually scoring up the aluminum. Then once you start seeing machining marks, such as I am seeing right there, that's how you know you're good to stop there. And voila, we are all done. As you can see, we still have a little bit of our TV on the outside of the block on either side. Like I said, don't really worry about that. Just make sure to scrape enough of it off where it doesn't put downward pressure on your oil pan. So now that this mating surface is clean, our oil pan mating surface is clean, I'm gonna clean the bolts, then clean our lower oil pan with brake cleaner, and then we're good to apply our RTV and slap her on.
All right, our mating surfaces are clean, our oil pan bolts are clean, and I'm a little bit high off carb cleaner fumes. So it's time to apply our TV. I'll be using Permatex Ultra Gray. This is what we use on our 22WX oil pan. So I'm sure it'll work just fine on a BRZ oil pan as well. All right, so we are at arguably the scariest part of this whole job, and that is reapplying the RTV. I'll be reapplying it directly to the mating surface and also around all of the bolt holes. Um, and yeah, Subaru says that you should aim for about a four and a half or four to five millimeter bead thickness. But let's be honest, who the hell is gonna sit there and measure their bead thickness? So we're just gonna kind of go for it. All right, she ain't pretty, but hopefully she works. Here we go. All right, got two bolts in, let's get the rest. Just an FYI, we are not torquing these right now. Um, every RTV is gonna have slightly different extractions, but Permatex basically says to just get all the bolts snug, wait an hour, and then go back through and torque them all. All right, so it's been an hour, we're back. It's time to torque all of these down. The torque spec will be 4.7 foot-pounds or 6.4 newton meters and you also want to torque in a star pattern. All right, and with the oil pan bolts being torqued down, the hard and scary part is done. Now, all we have to do is wait 24 hours before we can add our oil. I'm not gonna put the headers or the exhaust back on because after I add the oil, I'm gonna sit and watch the oil pan for a little bit to make sure no leaks start to happen because the oil does actually sit higher than the lower oil pan. So if we did something wrong, we'll know pretty much immediately. Then after I watch it for about an hour, I'll go ahead and put the headers, the exhaust back on, and then let it idle on the lift as I continue to watch the oil pan. And then we'll be done. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, we're back. It's a new day. We have some oil and we're about to be a little bit naughty because it hasn't quite been 24 hours yet. It's been 22 according to my watch. Simple reason being is I don't feel like staying here late as hell tonight. So we're just gonna drop some oil in it right now, wait an hour, and then if no seeps appear, we're gonna put everything back together. The oil capacity on the new BRZs and GR86s is 5.3 quarts. This multiple jug is five liters, which ends up being 5.283. So it should be just about enough. If you feel anxious about it, just pick up an extra quart and then you'll have some to top up. So we lifted the car back up and I almost pooped myself. Turns out we just forgot to tighten our drain plug. So it has been a little bit over an hour and so far, no signs of any seepage. Everything seems nice and dry, so we're gonna start assembling everything back together. <clears throat> and that of course means starting with the header, so what I like to do is just stick my exhaust header gaskets up here and just kind of let them rest on the threads. Uh, you want to make sure your up pipe is out of the way. I had pushed mine back up, so we're gonna hopefully get it back down. There we go. Let it hang just like we did before. All right, we've got our header. We want to make sure the O2 sensor wires are kind of resting up top here so they don't get in the way. And keep a couple nuts in your pocket. Let's get one nut started pretty good up here. There we go. why overalls come in super handy. Oh boy, getting a nut started on this side by hand is awkward to say the least, but 
Oh, there we go. We're going. We're going. There we go. Time to get the rest on and then torque them down. That does it for our headers. So now we just gotta bolt up our up pipe. Now we just gotta plug our O2 sensors back in. Don't forget to clip it back up into the block. And don't forget to clip your O2 sensor wire back into the head. And uh, all that I have left to do is put a new oil filter on and we're done. Moment truth. Look, see there, all dry, all dry on the side, other side. The back you can't really see because they have a little bit of foam placed there. Interesting choice. All right, so we've left the car idle for about 10 minutes. Nothing came out of the oil pan, so I'm gonna assume we did a job well done. Except I am going to keep the skid plate off for a few hundred miles just to monitor for any leaks more closely. You know, if your oil pan starts leaking, you probably want to find out sooner rather than later, right? But overall, this was a lot easier than I was expecting. I think doing this on the BBWRX really left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, not having a turbo there really makes things a lot more simple. Overall, I think I was about seven hours deep into it. And keep in mind, that's with lugging a camera around, filming every single nut, bolt, and clip that I touch, right? Which is pretty time consuming on its own. But yeah, I mean, I can't really end this video on a good note because it really sucks seeing car enthusiasts having to take this matter into their own hands because I guarantee you a big portion of people who buy the BRZ, the GRE6, the 22WX, they do want to modify the car. They probably are going to void the warranty, but they don't want to worry about their engine blowing up and then being left with somewhere around like a $12,000 bill. You know how sick this car would be if you dropped 12 grand into it in parts? It'd be like build of the year. So yeah, as at the date of filming, Subaru still hasn't made any sort of announcement or even acknowledgement to this. The closest thing I have seen is a response by Subaru of Australia to a concerned owner's email calling this whole thing rumors. Hundreds of blown FA24s at this point, rumors. Hundreds of pictures of the oil pickup tube being stuffed full of RTV, rumors. Full documented videos of people dropping the oil pan and finding RTV in their pickup tubes, kind of like this one, rumors. It's just so frustrating to see Subaru's complete lack of integrity on this issue. I mean, I get it. You're a huge corporation. You're owned by a bunch of investors. And what those investors do is take most enthusiasm and integrity in the company, and then they shove it out the window. And then all the people that cared about enthusiasm and integrity, yeah, they take those people, they shove them out the window as well. So then all the people that are left only care about sales, ROI, revenue, profit margins, and all that other stuff that we car enthusiasts couldn't give less of a shit about. Now, look, I get it. You're a business and a business's goal is to be profitable. But just because you need to make money doesn't mean you need to take enthusiasm, integrity, and then shove it somewhere in a dark, dark, deep corner. Look at Toyota, for example. They currently make four sports cars and rumors just came out that they're teaming up with Suzuki to make a successor to the original MR2, which would put them at five sports cars. And they're killing it with sales. I mean, absolutely killing it. And Toyota was the one who also reversed that one service manager's decision 
to void a warranty on the GR86 just because it was getting a little bit sideways at an autocross event. Subaru, you teamed up with Toyota to make this car originally. Maybe it's about time you start learning a thing or two from them. All right, that'll about do it for today's video, guys. If you found this video useful and want to stay tuned for our BRZ build, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed the overalls that I'm wearing, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Now, as always, I hope all of you are having a great day. I'll see you guys next time.